Hi, let's talk about extensive and intensive quantities. Uh, these can also be called uh, extensive intensive, intensive properties, uh, extensive intensive variables. Okay, extensive and intensive. Put simply, the concept is relatively simple. Extensive quantities scale with system size. I'll give an example of that. Whereas intensive quantities are intrinsic uh, to the system and do not depend on its size. Classification of quantities into extensive and, and intensive uh, uh, categorization can be helpful for thinking about uh, and organizing uh, the way we see the world and uh, any thermodynamic problems that we face. Extensive quantities. Let's consider the pot. And for the pot, imagine it has a certain volume. It's containing something. The pot is our system. Let's consider this pot. Uh, now, if the pot has a certain volume, and then the volume of that pot increases, how did I do it? Well, let's just say I have a, a magic thermodynamic wand that increases the pot size. That larger pot now has a greater volume. So the volume of the pot depends, well, on the size of the pot. You might say that's obvious, but that's what we mean by an extensive property. Let's talk intensive properties. We're back with the pot. Okay, now, with the pot or our system, it has a certain uh, emptiness right now. It has a certain temperature. I take some water and I pour that water in to the pot. Now, the water has the same temperature as the pot. The mass of the system is increased because I put in more water. But the water had a temperature and the pot had a temperature and the temperature of each was the same. So the overall temperature did not change. So te temperature is an intensive property. Regardless of how much water I have in it, the temperature doesn't change as long as the water that I'm adding is at the same temperature. So temperature is a property of the system. Even as the mass of the system, as I added more water, went up, so mass is an extensive property. Let's take a look at a few more examples of intensive properties and extensive properties. So something that's intensive, red, the color, whether it's a red car, a red truck, a red bicycle, doesn't matter the size of the object if each one of those were our system. Each is red. Okay, something else you might think of, uh, the density of water, whether it's a cup of water the density is one gram per cubic centimeter. Whether it's a cup of water or a lake of water, in both cases, density is the same. It doesn't depend on system size. Uh, temperature, we talked about. The temperature of uh, water, regardless of how much water you have, the water has a uh, temperature. So these are things that uh, you are uh, uh, familiar with. Um, pressure. We'll talk some more about this. Also intensive. So if I have uh, if I have uh, something like 10 to the 5 pascals of pressure or one pressure one atmosphere, if I have 10 to the 5 pascals of pressure inside a small balloon uh, or 10 to the 5 pascals of pressure inside a big balloon. Well, it's still 10 to the 5 pascals of pressure that's pushing on the inside of the balloon, regardless of whether it was a small balloon or a big balloon. Whereas extensive properties, well, um, if I have a cup of water or a, a lake of water, the volume is certainly different. If I have a cup of water or a lake of water, the mass of water is certainly uh, different, meaning more generically the amount of substance. Um, now, as we continue along in thermodynamics, we will see some of these other uh, uh, topics come up. Uh, these are all things that we'll get introduced to later. Uh, internal energy is going to be a big one. We'll see what that is. Entropy will be another big one. Um, uh, all of these will be uh, important under the examples here for extensive properties that we'll get into with time. Now, there is an interesting thing here just to show. Um, we can have something called the heat capacity or something called the specific heat capacity. So what are the what are the differences there? Well, the big difference is this word uh, specific. Um, sometimes there's a notation difference, not always, but uh, you can see in this case it's an uppercase C and a lowercase C. Um, 
Well, what's the difference? Well, heat capacity, that's how hard it is, how much energy you have to put in in order to increase the temperature of something, how much flame or fire you have to put in to increase the temperature of something. And you could ask that question uh, in both ways. You could ask it um, uh, per amount of substance. So the amount of fire that I've got to put in per amount of water is the same whether that's water in a cup or in a lake per amount of water, specific per amount. Whereas if I ask that same question, how much total flame do I have to put into a cup of water? How much total flame fire do I have to put into a lake? Well, in that case, you're obviously going to need to put a lot more total flame into the lake. So there are just two ways to think about the same thing. Do we want to think about the, the total lake, the total cup of water, or we just want to think about the uh, amount uh, uh, per amount of water in the cup or per amount of water in the lake, in which case it's the same, the specific. So that's an example of something like heat capacity, which whether we call it just heat capacity or specific heat capacity, it can be the heat capacity of the total system, the total mug of water, the total pot of water, the total lake, or it can be um, uh, uh, the same among a lake, a pot of water, or a cup, if we say per amount of water specific in each one of those different systems, mug, lake, or pot. Acabou.